today I'm going to show you how to populate a Word document using data from Excel. So here we have in front of us the data uh, within the worksheet. Um, currently it's formatted in a table. There's four rows with three columns. So here we are in Microsoft Word desktop and this is where we need to prepare the Word document for the insertion of Excel data. So we need to format this document uh, with a, a table. Um, so if we do that, and I'll show you. So let's have a three by two table. Um, now in the first column, we're going to enter the names of the fields. So here we have some already prepared. And then on the right hand side in the second column where we have to insert some plain text content controls and this is how excel is able to enter the data so let's do that now once we've done that we need to um, set the property of the uh, control and if we give it a name to match uh, the, the field so if we Okay, so that's the content controls entered. But one final step is we need to select the entire table and then enter a repeating section content control. And then we select it by clicking the three dots. Then we hit properties and then we give it a name. So we're gonna call this content control. You can call it anything you like. Now we save this up onto uh, OneDrive or SharePoint, wherever you want. So now we're ready to create the flow. So here's the flow that's going to populate um, Microsoft Word. So we start off with um, the trigger. And in this case, I've used uh, when a file is created or modified in a folder. Um, you can use other triggers, of course. So we can see here um, we've got the site address and the folder name. Um, um, so if we go to the next action, this is a list rows present in a table and we can see here that uh, we've got the Excel file itself with the named table listed. Okay, so and the next action is an apply to each. So for each row in that table, we're going to create an array and the array is in uh, its input is itself an array. So um, we have here the names of um, each content control. If you remember, um, this was the, these were the names of the content controls in Word. Now here we have each field um, from the Excel table. And you can see here the, um, the formula for it uh, references each um, field name. So we have customer name, industry type and contact email there. So the next action is a compose. So that literally just takes the output from the previous apply to each. And then we have a send email that's for um, debugging purposes. So I can see what the array looks like when building it. 
And then finally, uh, we have a populate Microsoft Word template action. Now here, um, we have put the um, location document library as normal and the Word document that we created earlier that had the content controls in it. Now here we're putting um, in, uh, if you notice here, we have content control. That was the name of the repeating content control as well. And we've put the compose action output here. So moving on to the next action. And what I've done here is because the file is getting overwritten, there needs to be a delete and a create as well. So that's the word document that's being created uh, because of the um, this previous um, populate action. So I'll show you in here we have um, it's set to run when the, the previous action, um, that's a populate word action, uh, succeeded. And then in the create file, we have set it to run if the previous action was successful or failed. Now this is because um, the file, if it has been deleted, it doesn't exist. And if it's still there, well, it, it needs to be overwritten. Okay, so let's run the flow and see how, how it works. Okay, so the flow started, so let's trigger it. So we, I triggered here by making a change to the workbook. So if I put a one in here, for example, so that'll be the flow triggered. If we go back to the flow, okay, so we can see it's running, it's deleted the file okay, and then it's created the file and it's run successfully. So let's have a look at the created Word document and see how that, if that's worked. Now here we can see the created file about a minute ago. So if we can, oh, and then we can see that uh, we have four rows um, that were in Excel, and we can see the data here uh, has been populated. If we go back to Excel, we can see. We've got the same data here. So whenever there's a change made in this uh, workbook, for example, if you add a row, the f uh, flow will trigger again and the Word document will populate. So the Word doc document is itself a live document and it's always showing uh, the up-to-date data in Excel. An alternative method uh, uses an array uh, instead of the compose. So in the flow, it's, a, it's identical except for the initialization of an array here. And I've called it word input array. Um, in the apply to each row loop, we are appending each uh, row from Excel into this array. So if you recall in the previous um, flow, um, it was appending to a compose action, but here in this one, it's appending to an array. Um, so it's identical uh, format as well. And again, we are using the compose in the next action. And from then on, it's ex exactly the same as the previous flow. In the final part of this video, part three, I'll show you how to populate Word using Flow, but also using Office Scripts. So we can see the flow here in front of us, and the second action is run script. And I'll show you the script itself after I've shown you the flow. But we can see here uh, what is actually happening is that the script retrieves um, the table as an array, it then uh, returns it um, into the apply to each row. So um, if we have a look at this, we can see in the apply to each, um, we are iterating over each row. 
uh, in Excel or in the result of the array that is. And in the uh, array, uh, we are appending uh, the values from each row. And the formula um, for each um, item here is items and then the name of the uh, flow action, which is applied to each row. And then we're um, identifying each column uh, using numbering. So we've got a zero here. And then uh, for the next column, we're using a one um, because it's a zero based index. And then we're using two for the third field. So you can see we're using an array here, not a compose. I've initialized an array. Um, in coding, um, that is non-low code coding, um, you would, uh, it, is, it is normal practice to declare your variables each and every time uh, you, you uh, create them. Um, and that's something that uh, we're doing here. So um, we can see that the flow is, is the same um, as the previous flows, except that we uh, have replaced the uh, get list of uh, rows from a table with a script action. Um, the rest of the flow is identical. So let's have a look at the script. Here we are in Excel. Okay, so uh, it's quite a short script, as you can see, and all we're doing is returning uh, the array. Now, as you can see here, I've declared the uh, variable sheet one as um, the sheet worksheet sheet one. I've declared the new range variable as a range of values from the table, and then I simply return that range um, I haven't referred to the table itself. I've just manually entered the uh, address of the range that I want returned. This is useful because um, it means that you, you're you not reliant on your data being uh, formatted as a table. So the Office Scripts does allow you to uh, access and retrieve data without first uh, formatting it as a table and it does return this uh, range um, back into your flow. So that's the uh, script.